Hi, it's Jan from the mountain. As you can see, our weather has changed drastically. And we've had storms, wet weather. It certainly is late summer at the moment. So, there's not an awful lot I can do outside. In this sort of weather, it's always nice to be able to stay at home and feel cosy and warm and dry. So today I'm going to show you some spinning of some yarn, spinning in the grease or finishing this skein for my side project of knitting, my latest painting and some finds of ceramics and a plate. So put your apron on, tie it tightly because this could just be a dirty job. But we're ready for it, so let's go. I have just nearly finished a second bobbin of this yarn that I'm spinning. I've done one, as you can see here, and I've more or less finished the second one. So I just want to finish that today and then I, would, I want to ply the yarn. Now I'm going to spin in my living room because it's comfy and I use, it's just an anti-slip under matting for a rug which stops my spinning wheel from slipping on this floor. There's the lovely Mr Byron cat just inspecting everything. This is what I'm going to be spinning today. It's in the grease, as you can see, and this wool fibre has a lot of Kemp hairs, which give it this beige sort of taupe look. It's completely different to the actual, the raw in the grease version, which is a lot browner. It's a lovely yarn when it's made. So I just need to finish bobbin. I'll get started and here I am just a few minutes later and I'm finishing my plying now. There we go. equipment so my foot and my leg work perfectly for me just checking it's secure I'll need to wash that though. Just got some more ties just to tie this skein before I wash it, just to stop it getting tangled up. Look. Just compare the two. The one on the right is washed, and the one on the left is about to be washed. I bought some frames oh, last year from Ikea. I was going to print off some paintings that I'd made of, of leaves 
and I never got round to it and then I finished my paper. I'm measuring my paper now, I'm going to paint a flower and this is the, the smaller size is better because the frame is matted so I think the smaller size paper will just just about fit in with no space around the edge my flowers on the tablet so I'm just going to sketch it out first. I'll speed things up for you in a minute. For me it's always important to have a fairly decent drawing before I start. ready to start painting any second now. So I start by wetting the parts of my paper that I want to paint first. In this case I wet the paper where I wanted the pink flowers to be painted. I was going to want to do them first. So here I am. Again this is sped up I'm normally a lot slower than this in real life. I'm using quite a big brush to do this because it holds a lot of water. I've got my little scrap piece of paper because I always check my colour before I commit myself on my, my uh, paper. I'm just going in with a fairly watery, transparent pink shade. While that is still wet, I want to drop in something a little bit darker. It's testing again. It's the right colour. Just while you're here, I'd be very, very grateful if you could subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to reach 100 subscribers by Christmas time. If you like the video, please also hit like and also that notification bell and that way you'll be the first to hear about any of my videos when they're released. Anyway, back to the painting. Now, I painted this, actually it was quite warm in my studio and everything dried up fast. So the darker colour that I put on didn't spread as much as I would have liked so I just had to wet my brush and just pull it out a wee bit. Now this brush I use to take off the paint because for me with watercolour it's just as important where you take off the paint as when you put it on. So I do take paint off to create certain effects. I've got the leaves to do here, do you see me pointing them out on the paper when everything's dry. Here I am after the first pass, I guess, of painting. It's 
looking okay. The paintings tend to look a little bit messy at this stage, for me anyway, and I sometimes get demoralised as I'm not a professional artist. Anyway, it all came together in the end. This was the next day when I went in again. This is still wet, so it will dry slightly lighter. Um, the actual pink flowers are dry. Let me just take it off my board. You saw me framing my daughter's portrait in the last video, so I won't show you framing this one, but this frame has matting on. So it was slightly different for me to frame and as the paper was quite small I used masking tape just to hold it in position because I didn't want it to slip down or to the side but as you can see I'm quite pleased with this effect it looks really good on my wall I have two more of these frames I think they cost about seven euros from Ikea I have two more of these frames and so that means two more flower paintings and I think it can look really good on my wall. It gives it a kind of a, a modern but traditional feel. I've got lots of wall there to put them on. So please stay tuned for my next paintings. Just before I go, here are some more finds when I cleared a friend's house well, because they were moving. Rather than throw these away, I thought they were very pretty. They're not valuable, but I just thought they were so pretty and I do actually have a bowl. I already had a bowl in the same floral pattern. So they match that. But I really did like these little plates. They're hand painted. They're modern. They're not vintage because they're dishwasher safe. The every everyone is different. Look at each apple. It's slightly different because it's hand painted. So I thought these would be lovely if we're having fruit after a meal. I just like them. So got those. And this plate, this is a souvenir plate from the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II in 1953. I did think it might have been uranium glass. It's got a funny green colour to it, so I had to buy a UV light and it just didn't glow, so it isn't. But it's a really nice souvenir. I, I don't think it's particularly valuable. I will probably resell it. I'm just trying to organise putting things onto my website to start because I've got lots of things to sell and this plate is going to be one of them. No chips in it and it's in really good condition. There are also some brown candlesticks that you can see. They didn't film very well, but there's one. Amber glass. Thank you for watching my video all the way to the end. Please join me next time for some more moments on the mountain. Don't forget to subscribe and like and ring that bell. See you next time.